Well, good morning, Westover Hills. It's good to see you. My name is Pastor Jonathan. I get the privilege of being the middle school pastor here at Westover Hills. Yeah, thank you. Our, our camp theme this year was marked, as you can tell, by some of the songs that we were singing. And listen, we, our hearts, our prayers were just that students would walk away and that they would know that they've been marked, they've been chosen by God, they are royal, they are sons and daughters of the king. So we are, we are ecstatic that uh, we are bringing you a report that shows that that's exactly what God did this year in our kids. So we're going to give you some, uh, some numbers about what happened at middle school camp. Attendance, this year for attendance, we had 266 middle schoolers go to camp with us this year. The most we've ever had. 266 volunteers. The people who made it happen this year, we took 72 volunteers to middle school camp, and they're the ones that made it all happen so that kids can experience God. Salvations. Now, these are the students who raised their hands or just to say, you know what, this is the first time ever I've accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. This year we had 30 students that, that accepted Jesus Christ for the very, very first time. And then we had those who said, you know what, I turned away, but it's time that I turned back. So we had rededications. This year we had 156 students who said they're giving their life back to Jesus. Next is our, is our healings. Now, these are students who walked in saying they were broken, saying that they were going through a tough moment, whether it be emotional healing or physical. And they, they walked away from camp saying, God touched my life and, it, and healed me. 174 students healed this year at camp. It's amazing what God did in, in their lives. Baptized students who were baptized into water for the first time were doing an, an outward expression of an inward decision that God has done in them. Uh, that's what baptism is all about. 90 students baptized this year at camp. Amen. Called into ministry. Those students who felt like when they, when they were at an altar time, God spoke to them and said they're going to be a missionary or a youth pastor or a lead pastor or a kids pastor. We had 45 students say they're called into ministry this year. Isn't God good? Last but not least, those who were baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit, uh, with evidence of speaking in tongues. You had 50 kids, 50 students, baptized, filled, empowered, ready to go out into this world and change it for God. Aren't you so proud of all our middle schoolers? Would you give a big hand clap for them one more time? Wow. Well, we wanted to be able to give you a representation of what our students experienced at camp. So, A, we want you to know that you can buy one of our drop cards in the back that has every event, has the speaker, all those things for both middle school and high school. The cards are in the back table. You can get those. But also, we wanted to show you not just worship and not just the stats, but some of the creative elements that your students got to see. So we're going to show you one that was showed at middle school, high school, or middle school camp. And it is called a human video. And this is essentially a, an, an acting out what's going on in a song. And this is about a young lady who's apprehensive about her walk with Christ because it's going to cost her something. It may cost her her life. And as she's, she's you know, worried about this, she starts to see the life of Jesus played before her. And finally, she makes the choice to pursue him with everything that she has. So if you would, wouldn't mind turning your attention to the stage as we show you the human video, Pursuit. Thank you. Chasing 
My name is Jason, and this is my story. So today at camp, it really changed me a lot. And when Pastor Jared was speaking his like sermon and everything, it was really good, and it really stuck to me. And one thing started leading to another, and he started prophesizing over Dominique. I was like, that's really cool. So I started thinking about my future and everything. And then all of a sudden, we made eye contact, and I thought, oh, man, I'm about to get in trouble. So I closed my eyes, and then he said, my name is Jason. Come up here. So I went on the stage, and he prophesied over me, and he said that in two years, I would be preaching on that stage, and I've always wanted to become a pastor, so that really stuck with me. 
Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. It's awesome. I don't know about you, but I'm already so encouraged. And I get, I've gotten to do this three times, but every time there's just something just tugs at my heart. So it's so exciting to see what God has done in our students' lives. Well, again, Pastor Jonathan, you're joining me on the platform. Um, now, you've been here a little over two years. And so the first question that I've been asking you all weekend is this. <laughs> you've been here two years. Have you finally saw the Lord in this and become a UT Austin fan? Or are you still a... <laughs> absolutely not. Absolutely <sighs> not. I'm an OU fan, Boomer Sooner, um, <laughs> strong Crimson. Um, I will say, I'll say this, I'm becoming a little bit of a Spurs fan. I'll say that. I can okay. be a little bit of a Spurs fan. Well, we'll take that. I know that you've been in youth ministry for a long time, and camp is not something that's new to you. What is it about camp that just creates that atmosphere where there's life change that happens? Mm. Yeah, I think one of the biggest things that uh, allows that to happen is really uh, students are removed from all the distractions. Parents, like, as you know, it's talking to your middle schooler without some type of uh, computer screen or phone mm. or something else going on, it's really difficult to even get their attention for more than 30 seconds. And when you get to camp, it's like they finally remove the distractions. They focus on friendships. They focus on really hearing what God is saying to them. And I think that's really the difference. One of the, one of the things that makes camp stand out is because they get to remove all the minutiae and things that uh, stand in the way of really hearing what God is saying to them at camp. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, so let me ask you a question. As a parent, you took two kids to camp this year. Uh, uh, what's that like? Uh, how, how do you think camp went and things like that, you know? Well, as a parent, first of all, I got my kids out of the house for an entire weekend. Come so on, that somebody. was awesome. That was like... Date night. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was great. No, you know, as a parent, you know, I always say this uh, about myself personally. It's, uh, you know, I have my, my calling to the Lord uh, as a Christ follower. And then my very second thing that I do is, is my responsibility is to my kids and my wife. And, and, and uh, whenever there's an opportunity for my kids to be at a camp like this, you know, I'm going to jump on it. You know... I was a youth pastor for a few years, and they used to always tell me that you're going to have all the answers when your kids are, are teenagers. And I can tell you I'm smarter than that. <laughs> uh, I'm so thankful for our youth pastors because they are now pastoring my kids. So, so as a parent, I absolutely love that they get to get away from, like you said, the distractions and just be uh, completely emerged where there are no distractions. They yeah. can, hear, complete, can, can hear, the God, hear the Lord clearly. Amen. So I love that as a parent. You know, there are so many um, takeaways from camp. I mean, there's a long list. But what would be the one thing that stood out for you for this year's camp? Hmm. Uh, you know, a, a particular student comes to mind. It was this young man who showed up in my office about three weeks before camp. And uh, he was just heartbroken. And as he sat in my office, he began to cry and, and, and talk to me about what's happening in his family. And the truth is, his, his dad walked out on him and on his, on his mom. They didn't know where he was at the time. Um, and finally, when they got a hold of him, he just said he wasn't a part of the family. And so this student, the seventh grader, is, is in my office, and he's crying and saying, why doesn't he love me? Why doesn't my own dad, like, love me? And I remember he literally said to me, Pastor Jonathan, I'm broken. Hmm. And I know the student was going to camp, and it was the second night of camp, but I got to see him as he was leaving the altar call, and he, he's crying, and I could tell God had done something special in him at camp. So I just pulled him to the side, and I asked him, hey, what did God do just now? And he just, in the middle of the crying, he just smiles, and he says, I'm free. I know I have a heavenly Father that loves me. And, and when I Amen. saw it, I thought, this is why we do it. You know, this is... Uh, we joke around, we've been calculating how long it took to, you know, prepare and to execute camp. About 300 hours it took to prepare and execute camp. Uh, and I think every single one of those adults would say, I would do it over again just to hear more stories like that. You know, that's why we do camp. Awesome. Praise the Lord. That's incredible. You know, um, I know that beyond, we want the camp experience, which we will do every year. It's just something that we, we love doing. But beyond that, we want, to, we want to continue to minister to students all year around. So kind of take a moment to share with everyone here kind of your burden for this generation. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, Pastor, I think we're all kind of aware of the statistics that are out right now about how almost 80% of students, when they graduate high school, they're leaving the church. And they're leaving in droves. And, and I think the heart of our lead pastor, the heart of Westover Hills and, and Boulevard Middle School and High School is we're going to say no more. 
That stops right now. We're going to say we're going to yeah. have kids who are passionate about God, kids who aren't just affected by the world but go out and affect the world for his kingdom. That's our heart, and that's our passion. And we're going to do that by giving them opportunities to experience making new and making great moments. You know, I'm reminded of a young lady who, you know, who's just, just struggling. She had been to camp two years before. She was an eighth grader this year. And every year she said she would walk away, but there was something missing. And I remember this year at camp, she said, I walked in thinking, why doesn't God say anything to me? Why, does, why doesn't God say anything specifically to me? And by the end of camp, I met with her again, and she says, God has called me into the ministry. I'm going to be a missionary one day. So to hear that story, that making new story that God is calling middle schoolers to be missionaries, that's what we're doing for making new and making great. Another making great story is there is this young man at the beginning of this last school year having a tough moment. The mom comes and we talk in, in our office and, and he is having a very difficult time making friends. That's the nature of middle school ministry. And as he's having a difficult time making friends at school, the only friends he, do, he does get are, are friends who have negative influences on his life. And so he's starting to get in more and more trouble, seeing the principal more. And we said, you know, we need to get him involved because when you come to, to Boulevard Middle School, there's opportunities for you to get involved and build better friendships. So he starts to get involved with the media ministry. And by the end of this last year, he is now one of the leaders in our student ministry. He's now a student who has turned away from those friends who are pulling him away from Christ. And he's standing up and he starts like a Bible st study on, on the morning. So it's, it's crazy to see these making great stories from students. So I want to encourage you, if you're a parent in here and you have a sixth grader or through eighth grade uh, and your student has not been across the street, students, if you're in here and you haven't been to Boulevard yet, you are missing an opportunity to connect with other people who are going to encourage you in this walk with Christ. You're going to miss an opportunity to experience what God is calling you to do. Uh, if you're an adult in here and you're looking for a place to get involved, if you're looking for a place to make a difference, and the next generation, we will take Boulevard Middle School has an opportunity just for you to get involved. You don't have to be a scholar in the Bible. You don't have to have a doctorate in the Hippostatic Union or the Trinity. You don't need that. What you need to do is have a heart for God and have a heart for students to just say, I'm willing to be used by God. And if that's you, I want to invite you to July 9th. We're having an open house at our 9 o'clock and our 11 o'clock service. And you'll be able to come in, check it out 15 minutes before service, check out what it's like, and then we'll show you and then we'll talk with you about joining us on the team and last but not least I want to invite all of our middle schoolers and especially our fifth graders going to be sixth grade because uh, you're going to be new this year we have an event called the lock-in mayhem now this is going to be from 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. right so this is going to be uh, bananas we're going to have three on three basketball tournament we're going to have dodgeball we're going to have trampolines all that fun stuff so make sure you sign up registration is open right now for that uh, I want to tell you thank you for allowing me to have an impact on your students lives uh, and aren't you so proud of them aren't you so proud of every single one of our students this year yeah. Well, if you don't mind, please turn your attention to the screen as we check out what high school camp was like this year. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Hey, my name is Pastor Tito. I'm the high school pastor here at Westover Hills. It is truly an honor and privilege to get to do what we do. Parents, thank you for bringing your teenagers out to camp. Can we give it up for all of our parents in the house, grandparents, aunts and uncles? Hey, we just wanted to celebrate what God did. This year we brought record attendance as far as high school students. We brought 237 teenagers with us to camp. And, you know, we literally could not do what we do without every single volunteer that joined us. We had 62 volunteers that made camp happen, that pulled it off this year. Stay people, serve people. Also, this year, we had several students come to camp. And many of them, some of them, were we think maybe they were bribed to come to camp. They didn't know anything about what they were going into. And they came in, and God rocked their world. And we had 26 kids give their lives to Jesus for the very first time. Amen. From death to life. And then this summer, we had several students who, for whatever reason, had felt far away from God. Maybe they had slipped back into old relationships or routines. And we had 158 students rededicate their lives to Jesus. Amen. Amen. This year, we had 87 students baptized in water, proclaiming to the world what God had done on the inside of them. We had several students come to the altar saying that they needed physical or emotional healing and receiving it. We had 165 teenagers receive some kind of healing at our camp this summer. This year, we had several students who said, I feel like I hear God speaking to me. And I feel like God's calling me to be a youth pastor or a kids pastor or a worship leader or a missionary. And we had 59 high school students feel called to serve God in the ministry. Amen. Amen. And then this year, we had a very powerful move of the Holy Spirit. We had several students praying and seeking after God. And 106 teenagers were baptized with the power of the Holy Spirit and the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Amen? Man, God is so, so good. So good. Hey, and we wanted to share with you one of our creative elements that we did this year at our high school camp. So what you're about to see is a funny little skit drama about some kids who figure out that being a superhero isn't quite what they originally thought it would look like. Check out this creative element. No, no, stop, wait. It was the year 2006, the year me and my three best friends met, and the greatest time in my life. It was an average day in the playground. Oh, kindergarten. I'm Batman. I'm Spider-Man. I'm Big Bird. Ew. Ew. Superheroes don't have feathers. And I'm Bible Man. Who's Bible Man? Yeah, he's not a real superhero. Uh-huh. I wonder about him at church. You have superheroes at church? Cool, can I come? Who cares what you think? You like Big Bird. If he's a real superhero, what can he do? Well... <gasps> he uses a sword! To cut off people's heads, right? No, 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 no! It's a sword and a spear! Sword of the Spirit? Cool! Let's make a team! We'll be unstoppable! Unbeatable! Awesomeable! Sassy! Um, I'm Batman! I'm Spider-Man! I'm Bible-Man! I'm Big... Bible-Man! This changes everything! And guess what? It did! From that day forward, you couldn't see one of us without seeing the other three. And in fact, since that day in the playground, they started to come to church with me. But then, around sixth grade, things, <clears throat> things started to change. Story of my life, I'll take a road, and drive all night, to keep a warm inside. I'm so glad you guys could join us for Story of My Life Club here at school. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> Not as awesome as Megan. Seriously, bro? Oh, okay, no. okay. Speaking of awesomely <laughs> gross, did you forget to put on deodorant again? Oh, nope. third time this week. And it's only Tuesday. Oh. Hey, 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 friend, hey, friend. Do you think I could borrow a quarter for some sour patch please? You do not need any more sugar. Aww. Seriously, though, have you seen Megan? She looks just like Selena Gomez. Stop. You should try to get her attention. Oh. Yeah, do your dance move, Andy. No. Andy. 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 Andy.
Oh, hey, bro, I think she's looking at you. Maybe you should go over there. Uh, okay, I'll talk to you guys later. Will we see you at church on Sunday? Yeah, yeah, sure, bye. Guys, Andy might actually get a girlfriend. This changes everything. And it did. Dating into our lives, well, at least for me it did. And things started to change even more as we went to high school. It all fell apart the day we were practicing for our youth group's talent show. You'll never fade away. <laughs> Your, Your love is here to stay. <laughs> With the in the rain. Oh, hold on, guys. Seriously? What? First he shows up late, and now his phone rings every five minutes. We're never going to get anything done. We're never going to sound like Pastor Alfred if he keeps talking on his phone. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I got to go. Seriously? Probably off to some random party to get drunk again. Forget it, guys. Let's just get out of here. And that night changed everything. Hey, Andy, are you hanging out with us this weekend, or are you hanging out with Megan? Because you're either with her or you're... You're partying again. You have so much to live for, I just don't understand. understand. Why haven't you come to church? You were the reason all of us started coming to church. You used to be such a good Christian, but now you've lost your faith. This changes everything. Just do, do whatever, whatever you want. want. And that's exactly what I did. I lost my friends. I lost my girlfriend. And I lost my faith. No, no! Stop! Wait! Why? See, in life, we experience things that change everything. We try to make it on our own, but we can't. God has changed us. I'm Bible man. But then we stray. Will we see you at church on Sunday? We can't make it. I can't make it on my own. You have so much to live for. Why? Because I'm Batman. I'm Spider-Man. I'm Bible man. And I'm Bible Man. We're a We're team. team. My name is Jonathan, and this is my story. Um, since I was about little, I've been attending Westover Hills for the longest time. And uh, as I got older, my mom started to talk to me more about God and what he was like and what he can do for you. But I've never really felt his presence in me. And I will, I'm a, I'll just be the person just to sit in the back and not really pay attention to the message and not worship as much. Um, I've attended three summer camps for a while and they haven't really done anything for me, but this year I've really felt the Holy Spirit in me when, when, I, when I saw my sister break down and cry because um, he was just, him himself talked to me and her and told us what it was and everything's going to be good in the long run and what he can do for you. And Jesus is like no other. And what he does is unbelievable. So I thank him and what he does. Amen. Wow. Love that story about Jonathan. Just every time I've seen that, that testimony, I just want to jump into that screen and just hug this guy's neck. It's just an incredible story of God's grace. But again, Pastor Tito, you're joining us on the platform, and we're just continuing this conversation about students. You've been with us a couple of years now. San Antonio's grown on you. Your family has grown. Man, we're just, we're just glad that you're here, bro. Glad to be here in the promised land. That's right. <laughs> you know, you've been in youth ministry for a long time now, and I know that camp is nothing new to you. Just like I asked Pastor Jonathan, what, what, is, what is it about, what was it about high school camp that just makes life change happen and make it so effective when students go away? Absolutely. You know, every year when we're gearing up for camp and camp seasons right around the corner, we just see this, this spirit of expectation in our teenagers, that they begin to talk about what God did last year and how they're expecting in faith for God to do something incredible this year. And as they surround themselves with other teenagers, we see once we get to camp that they're now in a room filled with, with hundreds of other teenagers who've been thinking and praying the exact same way. And it's just explosive that God just comes in and he wrecks their life every time. Every time. So, okay, so for those of us that are north of 45, would you please explain what wrecked means? Because I have teenagers, and there's a lot of times they'll say something, and I'm saying, I'm sorry, can you please give me the interpretation? When you say God wrecked them, what do you mean by that? Yeah, so when we say wrecked, all we mean is that a student gives God an opportunity to just change their life. And we have so many kids who come into camp with baggage and, and with things that, that when God speaks to them, that when God touches them, when they have an experience with him, they leave those things at camp. They leave the music they listen to. They go back, and some of the girls 
break up with their smelly boyfriends that they don't want nothing to do with. And they, they share Jesus with them, but they don't share their kisses with them anymore. Yeah. And uh, it's just a powerful thing when God wrecks a teenager. Awesome. Love it. Yeah. Oh, I did have a question for you. Okay. So knowing that you've been a youth pastor, what, was, what has been your craziest camp experience? Craziest? So, so I was a youth pastor uh, here at West Over Hills for about eight years. Uh, so I went to camp all, a lot. Uh, probably the craziest thing that I did at camp was we, the, the dorms are just these long halls with just multiple rooms, right? And so the last day of camp, the last night, I went to every room, and I started with dorm number one, and I knocked on the door, and I said, hey, guys, guess what? I just want to let you all know, about midnight, the room across the hall, they're going to bum rush you guys with pillows, and they're just going to start a big pillow fight with you. I just want you guys to be ready. They're like, okay, man, yeah, we'll be ready for them. So I went to the next door, and I said, hey, guys, guess what? I want you to know the room next to you, about midnight, they're going to come bum rush your room with pillows and get you. You better be ready. Oh, Pastor Mark, we got them. We'll get them. And I did that to every single room, the entire, all the way down the hallway. Then I got to my room and I pushed the bunk beds in front of the door and just waited for the ruckus that happened. So it was awesome. I loved it. Genius. Hey, Genius. <laughs> now I know that there's a, n- a number of things that we are celebrating. We're going to continue to celebrate about camp, but what's the one thing that you walked away with from this year's camp for for our students? Absolutely. Um, Night one, our camp speaker, Chris Sostrada, said something. He said that God is so intimately concerned with the secrets that you keep and with the people you surround yourself with. And, and we saw that on night one, that night that we had over 150 students rededicate their lives to Jesus, that they were just coming clean. That they were laying their secrets before the Lord. They were, they were laying all those dark, hidden places and letting God set them free. And, and as they would open their eyes, they were surrounded by other teenagers doing the same thing. And they were surrounded by a support network that now that they're home, that they have people that are fighting this fight with them. That's great. The accountability continues. Yeah. I love it. You know, would you just take a moment and just kind of unburden your heart with everyone here today and just kind of share your burden for this generation? Yeah, absolutely. You know, our goal as the high school and middle school pastors here at Westover Hills, is that just as in our adult services, you have an opportunity every week to have a making new moment and making great moments. We want that for every student. Our goal is that as they walk through the doors, we would provide them with number one, practical teaching, that they would understand what we're saying, that every message would be on their level, that when they go home, they know how to apply what they've learned. They know how to practice it at the dinner table how to practice it at their part-time jobs, in that math class, you know, where where they're not paying any attention. We want them to take God's word and put it into action. And the second thing is our goal is to coach our students that every single one would begin practicing what we call private disciplines. That prayer would not only be something that they do at an altar call at camp. That worship isn't only something they do on a Sunday morning in our youth services. That Bible reading isn't only something that they do and they wait for their youth pastor to open the scriptures, but that when they go home, that they would devour God's word because his word is life. Amen. The third thing, our goal, is that every one of our students would get involved in personal ministry. That every single one of them would begin seeing their schools, We begin seeing their jobs. We begin seeing that crazy uncle with the off-color jokes at the dinner table at Thanksgiving as their mission field. And that they would begin to pray for others. And that they wouldn't just shut up the gifts that God has put inside of them, filling them with the Holy Spirit, that they would be sent and go out in the power of the Holy Spirit and bring others to Him. And then here's our next thing. For every student that decides to volunteer with us and for every adult, that says, you know what, I want to partner with you guys and see God move in this generation. Our goal is that they would serve as providential relationships. Because every one of us has had one of those fork in the road moments where somebody was there at the right place in the right time, just like in this drama you saw earlier. And our goal is that for our adults and for our student leaders, that we would be that for others because we know every teenager at some point will encounter a pivotal circumstance, a crossroads where they have to decide, I'm going to keep following Jesus or I'm not. And as Pastor Jonathan so eloquently said, we're done being statistics. We are done. 
and in the power of the Holy Spirit. And as a body of Christ, our goal together is to reach this world for Jesus. And so we wanted to give you a couple practical ways that we're seeking to do that. Coming in two weeks, on July 8th, we're starting a high school Saturday night service every week for our high school students. Amen. So if you have a student and and they just got a job and they're working all day Sunday, it's all right. You can come Saturday night. Also, if you have a teenager and maybe you've, you guys have been coming to Westover for a long time, but they're just nervous, a little shy or apprehensive about being a part, we have coming up in the month of July a six-week teen competition event called Tribal Wars. And Tribal Wars is just this crazy couple of weeks where students get to basically relive camp in some ways, have team games, but they get to make some real friendships and relationships that we're praying will last them the rest of their lives. And then here's the last thing. If you feel like God's been tugging on your heart, if you're a teenager here or if you're an adult here, and you feel like, you know what, it's time for me to take the next step. It's time for me to get involved. I'm ready. And then this Wednesday night at 7 p.m. in our high school auditorium, we have a new team's launch night, and you are invited. What we'll be doing is sharing the heart of what we do here at Westover and also sharing some teams that you can be a part of serving to help us reach the next generation. So thank you so much for your time. Parents, grandparents, friends, family, we love y'all, and we are so honored to be here. Thank you so much. Amen. (laughs) Praise the Lord. Hey, man, if you'll just hold with me for just a few moments, we're going to be dismissed in just a minute. But I'd like to kind of wrap up this moment by just, you know, just how uh, blessed I have been just being able to not only be a part of this as a parent, but as one of your pastors. You know, since I can remember, I have always known the heart of our lead pastors, Pastor Jim and Denise Ryan, to have a heart for students and for kids. When I first came and I started in youth ministry in 94, I remember showing up to the church and Pastor Jim had an office for me. Listen, I didn't know what to do in that office. When he'd walk by, I'd open my Bible real fast just so he could think I'm doing something, you know. But I had an office, just started moving paper around, just looked important or whatever. But I had an office where I could study. I had a a youth room that he converted and made it a place where students can come and be ministered to on a weekly basis. I learned from the very beginning, from the very beginning that our pastors, even way back then, had a heart for students and a heart for kids. And here's what I want to say to you parents and students that are in here today. I trust that this entire weekend, this entire service that you've been a part of has really penetrated your heart. Listen, if you have not been encouraged by something that has been said or something that you saw or that you experienced, you need to check your vital signs because God is doing some incredible things. But here's what I want you to walk away with. We as a church are going to stay committed to the next generation. Can I tell you, I believe the next youth pastors for Westover Hills are in our student ministries. The next pastors for Westover Hills could very well be in our student ministries. The next missionaries, the next business people that are going to go into the marketplace and tear up this world for Jesus. Can I tell you, we are committed to making that happen. And I'm going to invite you, in fact, would you stand with me? And I'm going to invite you to just continue to pray for your youth pastors. Pray for Pastor Tito. Pray for Pastor Jonathan as they continue on a weekly basis, pour out their hearts to minister to students. Continue to give. When you give, you help us to do and impact students in everything that you you saw this weekend. You help us make that happen. But I want you to be encouraged that what God is doing in the lives of our students can continue to happen in the lives, in your life today. So would you just celebrate with me one more time what God did in our student ministries at youth camp this summer. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's worship the Lord one more time. With a broken heart, you pick me up now. I'm set apart from the ash. I'm born again. Forever safe in the Savior's hands. You are, you are more than my words can say. I follow you, Lord, for all my days. Fix my eyes, follow your ways. Forever 
Worshiping with you guys this morning. My server, you guys have a great and wonderful afternoon.